Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt, and in this video, I'm gonna be going over uh, it, exact numbers and how to tell whether uh, the number or measure you have that you're using is exact. Uh, one of the questions I always get from students is like, um, how do you know if it's exact or not? Or the problem they run into is that when they're trying to figure out their significant figures, uh, they, they forget or don't realize that what they're uh, multiplying or dividing or adding and subtracting is an exact number. Um, and so one of the things I always uh, tell my students is um, uh, what you should be looking out for is anytime you have a relationship between either a metric unit and another metric unit within the same category, like so if I have a metric unit of length and I'm comparing that to another metric unit of length, then that's going to be exact. It's going to be true by definition. Um, if you're comparing uh, English system of length or English system with another English unit of length, um, then you're going to have an exact relationship. And in those uh, relationships, those exact numbers, the number of significant figures is going to be infinite, right? So, um, so you, uh, you don't have to worry about those when you're trying to figure out how much, how many sig figs your answer should be in. Um, if you're, if you have a relationship between, say, uh, something, a unit in the English system and a unit in the metric system, if you're comparing units from the two different systems, then in that case, it's going to be a measure, and you do have to consider the significant figures. It's not going to be infinite. So again. So if you're looking at metric to metric units in the same category, like length to length or uh, or volume to volume, uh, then you're going to uh, they're going to be exact relationships and true by definition. If you're comparing a unit of English system to metric system, that's going to be a measure, and you're going to have to pay attention to the number of sig figs. Um, the only example that is a, uh, an exception to this that I have come across. I haven't come across any others, but if you know of any others, then please let me know uh, down in the comment section. Um, and that reminds me, make sure that you, uh, if you like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel, make a comment in the comment section about anything you've enjoyed if you like my videos. So now that that plugs out of the way, let's continue. So the only example that I've run across where you uh, have an English unit uh, related to a metric unit, and that's an exact relationship, is the inches to centimeters. So one inch is exactly equal to 2.54 centimeters because that is true by definition. We've defined it that to be true. Um, like I said, I don't know of any other examples, but if you know, let me know. Um, so, um, so that's the basic idea you want to get uh, it, it get down and in your head uh, when you're looking at these things. So let's go over some examples here and uh, see if we can tell if they're exact or not exact numbers. Okay, so uh, if we're looking at A, it says there are 100 centimeters in one meter. So here we're comparing centimeter, which is in the metric system. And you can tell it's in the metric system because C for centi and the uh, base unit M for meter. So we have in the metric system here, meter is the base unit for length in, this, in, the, uh, met, uh, in the metric system. So here we're comparing a unit of length to a unit of length in the metric system. So that means that this is going to be exact. 100 centimeters is equal to one meter. That's true by definition. We have defined a centimeter as being one one hundredth of a meter. So therefore, it's going to take exactly 100 centimeters to equal a meter. That's true by definition. All right. So here for B, uh, we have a meter of length in the metric system, and we're comparing it to yard. Yard is in the English system in the length. Right, so length and length, but we're looking at metric to English. So this is not going to be exact. It's going to be a measurement. So this is going to be uh, uh, your number of sig figs. This can change.
depending on how accurate or how precise your uh, measuring instrument is, these numbers can change. You could have more digits. So this is going to depend on your instrument, your measurement. Uh, what about this equation here? This is uh, the equation that you may be familiar with and how to convert between Celsius and Fahrenheit temperature state scales. Um, so when you're looking at this, this is often uh, where my students get confused uh, when they're trying to figure out sig figs. It's like, if I use this equation, how many sig figs? Do I, do I count this? Do I count this? What's going on here? And uh, the uh, way you want to look at this is you want to figure, you want to know where this is coming from. And so in another video, I had talked about the different scales and how they're related to each other. So you can go back to that video and look at that. But let me uh, just give you a brief synopsis of it. Um, so when, uh, when you're looking at uh, the Celsius and Fahrenheit scales, the plus 32 comes in because uh, you'll notice you, if you are familiar with the two scales of Fahrenheit and Celsius, uh, Celsius water boils, I'm sorry, water freezes at zero and in the Fahrenheit scale, water freezes at 32. So there's that difference between the scales between zero and 32 for the freezing of water. So you have to add 32 degrees to your Celsius to get the Fahrenheit. So that is a, this is an exact number. The 32 is not a measure. It's an exact because we're comparing the two uh, scales that we created. Uh, also, the nine fifths here is also exact because, again, if we're looking at the increments of the Celsius scale versus the uh, Fahrenheit scale, the uh, the number of increments you're fitting into the uh, the Fahrenheit scale is 180 increments. Uh, for the Celsius scale, between zero and 100, we're looking at the boiling of water at 100, the freezing of water at zero, that's 100 increments between those two points. In the Fahrenheit scale, it's 32, right? So we're at 32 degrees for the, uh, the freezing of water, and you're at 212 for the boiling of water. And if you count the distance of the increments, that's 180. So if you put 180 over 100, you get nine fifths. So that's a ratio between the two scales. That's exact because the, the scales have been defined that way. They haven't been measured that way. It's been defined. So that's where these numbers come from. So whenever you're using this equation, you can ignore these as far as sig figs go because they have an infinite number of sig figs because of their exact nature. And then finally, D, we have pi is equal to this number here. Is that exact or not exact? Well, uh, anyone who's familiar with pi knows that this is an irrational number. Uh, this goes on forever. So uh, 3.1415927 goes on and on and on. Uh, so this is not an exact number. Um, so, um, so we don't have to worry about the sig figs here when we're using pi. So uh, I hope this video is helpful. Again, if you uh, like this video, if you like my videos, please uh, like them, share them with others. Uh, subscribe to my channel and make a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think and if there's anything else you would like me to cover. Thanks for joining me and see you later. Have a great day.